Pastor Lowell Allman, we welcome you to worship to our traditional service here at 1030 at Love of Christ, both in person and online. We encourage you to sign the purple books that are in the row of chairs so we know who's with us today. We hope that you will uh, introduce yourself to somebody you might not know. We're going to welcome uh, Sydney, uh, Sydney Carol Allman to First Communion uh, this morning, and her family is here, so we welcome them. Uh, Sydney's the granddaughter of members Lowell and Sally Allman, and so this is a special occasion. We uh, want to uh, continue to invite our folks that, uh, oh, and I ask that you come up during the Lamb of God. You're in charge, Sally, okay? Gift cards for family Christmases that we're doing with neighborhood schools are still being collected. Uh, you can turn in your 2024 financial commitment cards. Uh, we continue to provide hospitality uh, before this service, so if you want to come early, uh, between 10 and 10.30, we got goodies, coffee out on the patio, um, and uh, today was a little interesting with the wind chill factor, but um, <laughs> that, that is not a normal occurrence here. So uh, we continue to sell tickets for our music ministry dinner next Sunday, at, at, and those are on sale after worship, or you can still buy those online as well. And um, uh, we want to remind you next week, if you're interested in buying Lefsa, um, our campus ministry at ASU is selling Lefsa after the, the 9 o'clock service, so come, come before this service uh, and go next door and you can buy Lefsa. And that will support campus ministry uh, at the ASU uh, ministry there. At this time, uh, as part of our emphasis on ELCA World Hunger, we're going to watch a video provided by uh, ELCA World Hunger. It has been a great inconvenience every day to collect firewood, light the stove, cook the food, especially in the summer. Cooking has been a pain. While cooking, when we blow the flame, we inhale the smoke. It goes in our throat, lungs, nose, and stings our eyes. We can get eye diseases and lung diseases from this smoke. A traditional stove made from earth, bricks, and wood emits so much smoke that blackens pots and pans. When the Tripti Project staff talked about the smokeless stove, a couple of women started laughing. They couldn't believe it would work. I hadn't seen one myself, so I said, why not go and see what it is like? The target area under the Tripti project is primarily a rural area. We've been explaining to people the advantages of biopellets, how they will save time that they otherwise spend on getting firewood, how the smokeless stove will prevent diseases, and how using biopellets and not firewood is better for the environment. We have benefited because earlier we used to burn chaff from wheat, soy, corn, and sorghum. Then the Tripti project came and asked us not to burn this chaff. They bought it from us and gave it to the factories to make bio pellets. We're disseminating good and useful information and promoting advocacy which was not happening before. People in our area have become much more aware of smokeless stoves because of the Tripti project. My wish is that within our area, which comprises of 75 villages, every household should have and use a smokeless stove and bio pellets. Now the demand is there. Having seen a smokeless stove, people were very interested in it. They asked me when they could get one for their home, and how much it would cost, and where they could go to buy pellets. 
Once the system is set up, then the Tripti project will start to make sense to everyone. Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Righteous God, our merciful master, you own the earth and all its people, and you give us all that we have. Inspire us to serve with justice and wisdom, and prepare us for the joy of the day of your coming. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We were... The first reading this morning is from Ezekiel chapter 34. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out, as shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the water courses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. And there they shall lie down in good grazing land and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lay down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David will be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from Ephesians, the first chapter. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what, it, what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put his power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him with the head over all things for the church, which is the body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. according to Matthew. 
When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he'll put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick. And you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick, or in prison, and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he'll say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me naked and you did not give me clothing sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace, Grace and peace to you from Jesus Christ, Christ the King, whose reign and realm are built on compassion, hospitality, and service to one's neighbor. Amen. We see it on most Sundays in the fall. They wander in, they wander in this service and the other services, wearing the colors of their favorite college football team or NFL team. <laughs> Often even wearing those colors when the only hope of their team's victory is a prayer. Sea vessels all bear colorful flags reflecting the country to which the ship is registered. And at our recent Reformation service on Sunday, Reformation Sunday, we invited many of you to wear red. And you did. Because red is the color of celebration and it is the color of the Holy Spirit moving and renewing the faith in the people of God to continue to reform and reshape the church according to the way of Jesus. If one knows anything about street gangs or motorcycle gangs, you know they all have colors to wear or symbols that they sew on to their clothing. And many even wear tattoos to signify what group they're affiliated with. The idiom to show one's colors is to reveal one's true nature, one's true feelings, or one's true motives. And to show one's true colors means that maybe you were hiding them before and now they're coming out. The phrase, show one's true colors, is derived from nautical jargon. The colors of the ship would be flown high at sea. But when there was conflict at sea, many navies were known to take down their country's flag and not show the colors that they, who they belonged to, or they'd raise the flag of the enemy to act like they were part of the same team until they weren't. And then, after the battle, they'd raise the true colors to show who they pledged allegiance to. Today is Christ the King Sunday. It's the last Sunday of the church year, so you made it. Tomorrow is New Year's in the church. 
A day here in, in this church, it's a focus on the true colors of Christ. The true colors of Christ returning as king of the universe and pronouncing a word of judgment and separation, which I know is difficult to hear when you hear that reading. It was not until the 1970s that Lutheran congregations even adopted the Christ the King Sunday as part of their liturgical church calendar. But the feast of the Church of Christ the King was officially established by Pope Pius XI in 1925. And this came only seven years after the war that was going to end all wars, World War I, where it's estimated that 16 to 20 million people were killed with the greatest and best technology that war creates. The institution of the Feast of the Day was a way to address these countries that had engaged in conflict over land, fighting over who claimed what land and who wanted to retain what land. Pope Pius wanted the church to state her belief very loudly and very clearly that no earthly power, no one ruler has absolute power but Christ. Christ is Lord. He is king of kings and rules by the standard of justice and mercy. And as king, he does not rule as earthly powers rule. He rules with love, with service, and with a crown of thorns on his head. Today's feast states that every person, every government, and every earthly ruler will have to stand before him in judgment and be accountable to God's authority. Pope Pius XI was also deeply concerned about the rising tide of nationalism. Nationalism being defined as identification that with one's own nation and support for its interests at the expense of all other nations. The observant of this day in the church across human-made boundaries and the continents of this earth was to serve as a strong reminder. A strong reminder that the baptized in Christ belong to the king. The king who has the authority and the king who has jurisdiction over all nations. And we dare be careful when we step into the role of determining who's worthy and who is not. Who is acceptable and who is not. And what ideology, political, cultural, or religious position is the true and only one aligned with God. You may or may not be aware, but there is an increasing movement of nationalism around the globe and in this country. This has nothing to do with being a good citizen or a patriot who loves one's home country. This has nothing to do with affirming the blessing that we in America enjoy because of hard-fought sacrifices and the continuing painful struggle to form a nation where all humans are created equal and have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This has nothing to do with praising the values of democratic principles. Nationalism is a movement. It's a movement that puts one, one's country above all countries and in its most extreme forms. History reveals it leads to endless armed conflict and countless deaths of not just soldiers engaged in battle. If we read the Bible, and it's bloody, and it's messy, and there's a lot of wrong that was done by people in the name of God, if we read the Bible or study world history, we can know for sure human beings have a propensity. We have a propensity to want to draw lines, pick sides, claim what others possess, use power, influence, and wealth to protect self-interests while developing technologies and weapons that can annihilate whoever we consider our enemy. This becomes particularly dangerous. And we as Christians need to be aware how the name Christian is being hijacked when nationalism 
is preceded by the word Christian nationalism. It becomes particularly dangerous when the cross of Jesus is blurred with the colors of a particular country or a group of people. Our lesson today indicates God's concern and working among and within all human-made nations. Our gospel for this morning is a clear word of warning. A warning to any of us who are tempted to decide who's in and who's out or thinking we know who knows God and who does not know God. The story of the Son of Man coming in judgment and separating the sheep from the goats and the righteous from the unrighteous has often been a source of sermons in the church. A source of sermons that either seek to shame us or make us feel guilty for our failure to serve the least of these, my brothers and sisters. It is quite possible that the first hearers of Jesus' story understood this word is not directed to them. It's not directed to followers of Jesus on how they are to treat the least, the last, the lost, and the little. We must understand that the first disciples and the early Christian community were the least, the last, the lost, and the little. Which is 180 degrees from where we sit today. Sure, there were a few folks of wealth and means that were converted by the Holy Spirit who followed Jesus and supported generously the mission of Jesus, but they were very, very few. And as followers of Jesus, they were already declared among the righteous. They were already declared, you're accepted, get over it. Through their baptism into Christ, they were declared a child of God, a daughter of God, a son of God, not based on their good behavior or charitable actions but based on God's action of loving and forgiving them unconditionally through Jesus. Followers of Jesus knew and know through the witness of the scriptures and the three-year public ministry of Jesus, loving one's neighbor, ministering to the marginalized, caring for the sick, hungry, thirsty, poor, and in prison is part and parcel of being a follower of Jesus. But it's not about gaining one's salvation or gaining one's acceptance from God. What may be seen in this lesson is the good news of God's faith in humanity and God's commitment to provide no matter, no matter the circumstance which may lay before us. We need to remember when this story starts out. The focus of this scene is on the judgment of the nations. And that word nations is key because the nations are those outside the chosen people of God. Israel and by extension, the followers of Jesus. These are nations who have not experienced or been told the good news of God's love in Jesus. Jesus is addressing his disciples in the context of them being sent out in mission and they'll be going out to these nations. And you might remember in Matthew 10, Jesus sent 12 of the disciples out. And they went out with no luggage, with no money, with no extra stuff. Because they were going to have to lean on and trust in the hospitality that God would provide through unbelievers. And if they ran into hostility or inhospitality, they were just supposed to move on. And keep doing what Jesus had been doing. In Matthew 28, at the end of this Gospel of Matthew, Jesus gives what's called the Great Commission, where he commissions his disciples to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in his name, teaching them all that he has taught, and holding on to the promise that Jesus will be with you to the end of the age. No, this lesson isn't an appeal to love our neighbor as ourselves and get to work serving the least of these among us or else, or else we'll be cast into eternal damnation. Jesus is not telling this story to his followers to scare them with the threat of hell or eternal punishment. Jesus assumes those that he has taught, 
those he has spent time with, those he has shown his own ministry among the least, the last, the lost, and the little, this will be a distinguishing mark of being a part of the body of Christ, of believers putting their faith into action. But as they are sent out to love their neighbor, as they're sent out to love their neighbor who does not know or maybe even believe in Jesus as they do, as you and I are sent out to our non-believing friends and neighbors, Jesus is realistic. Matthew is realistic. Look what will happen to Jesus because he dared to so love the world even the least of those among us. In the context of Matthew's congregation, the followers of Jesus probably had personal experience. They probably had knowledge of the destruction of the holy temple in Jerusalem and the walls of Jerusalem being torn down by the Roman army. And they may have had direct experience of persecution. Persecution from the Jewish leadership and persecution and the threat of death. By the Roman government. However, as they sent out, as they are sent out, Jesus in our, in our lesson today describes there will always be individuals and there will always be communities that though they may not confess Jesus as Lord with their lips, they may not have even heard of Jesus, who he is or what he has done, they still live with an ethic of love that includes the stranger. And the vulnerable, without being motivated by fear of hell or some payoff in the end. The sheep and the goats in this story, the righteous and the unrighteous, are completely shocked and surprised when the word of judgment comes. So maybe we need to be careful. We need to be careful when it comes to judging who is righteous and unrighteous. Saved or unsaved, destined for heaven or destined for hell. Jesus makes it clear in this last teaching in Matthew's gospel, just before his arrest, that this is the job of the Son of Man to make that judgment. He's the only one who needs to make that judgment and handle that responsibility. And as we continue to seek to follow Jesus as he leads us to love our neighbor as ourselves, with special attention to the least, the last, the lost, and the little, may we not be surprised to see in them Jesus. May we also continue to keep our eyes and our hearts wide open to that stranger or that person of another nation or faith tradition who clearly is showing his or her true colors and knows that God is love in the way in which he or she shows that love to us and to anyone, anyone in need. Amen. saints of old their first truth brought of orchard flock and field to God the giver of all good the source of bounteous yield so we today first fruits would bring the wealth of this good land Oh.
with the whole church we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Lord Jesus Christ, gracious sovereign of faith and hope, you call your church to be people who bear witness to your goodness. Bestow on us the strength for the journey of life and joy in the promise of salvation. God of mercy, hear our prayer. In the midst of thanksgiving for your many blessings, help us and your whole church to remember those who are hungry and thirsty those who live in fear and devastation, those who seek employment and struggle with homelessness. Help us and all your people to be generous and caring. Enable us to listen to your exhortation to welcome the stranger and care for the oppressed. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Just as you, Jesus, showed compassion on those in need, so give us the patience to share one another's burdens and grant us the courage to be friends of the truth and ambassadors of hope. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Listen to the cries of children wherever they face war, devastation, and hunger. Bring comfort to them through the work of agents for peace and ambassadors of reconciliation. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Bestow, we pray, healing and hope on those who are ill or recovering from surgery. We especially remember those in this community of faith who now are in need of renewed health and strength. Bless those who minister to them and sustain all in the promise of your steadfast love. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Give us courage and insight to all those who serve faithfully as leaders pastors and bishops in your church. We especially remember today our Synod Bishop Deborah and our presiding Bishop Pro Tem Michael. Sustain them in their ministry for the well-being of all people of faith. God of mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the gift of your word and the sacraments of baptism and Holy Communion. Bless Sydney, Carol, Holman on this day of her First Communion in her continuing journey of faith and hope. God of mercy, hear our prayer. We remember with thanksgiving all those who have lived and served as your faithful people. Comfort those who mourn and sustain all who grieve in the promise of eternal joy in the, to, for the great banquet of the heavenly feast to come. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Listen this day with compassion to the petitions of our hearts and look with kindness upon the needs of your people, we pray, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness as eternal priest and king of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and making all things subject to his rule, he might present to you, God of mercy, 
an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so with the angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we could proclaim. indeed holy almighty and merciful God you are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory you so love the world that you gave your only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life we give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation in the night in which he was betrayed our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering therefore his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give you thanks, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able, we ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace and receiving the forgiveness of sin may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The bread of life and the cup of salvation come to the banquet, for all is now ready.
Let us pray. Gracious God, in this meal you have drawn us to your heart and nourished us at your table with food and drink, the body and blood of Christ. Now send us forth to be your people in the world and to proclaim your truth this day and evermore. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Peace, share the good news. Thank you.